hello and uh, welcome to this part of programming tutorial but in this part we won't do any programming we will learn how to install server grade operating system that is Debian on virtual box now you see the screen uh, which you can see is actually a Mac OS but I rarely use Mac OS I actually use Linux on a VM so for running the VM I need VirtualBox which you can download from here so for Windows host you can choose this for OS X host you choose this for Linux host you can download here and for Solaris here however if you want to run uh, Linux on top of Linux then no need to use VirtualBox instead you should use Zen Virtualization I already downloaded the virtual box and yes you can see it is running here already and I have got mint here already as a VM for Debian so let me give you some background all right we will first go to the download link and then we will see about the background so for uh, download go to CDIS images you can download using any of the mechanisms here so for now I can share the link now this comes in uh, two versions stable and testing um, normally you should prefer stable release I choose testing so that I can report bugs and uh, if there is a fix I can release the patch and so on so that's how you should choose as per your test so if you are a developer you can choose testing so that if some program crashes you can at least send anonymous bug report so the testing packages are built every week these CDs are regenerated I have downloaded CD1 so if you go to stable so you got so many choices here regarding platforms normally if you want 32-bit desktop you choose this or if you have 64-bit Intel or MD machines you can choose this so if you go to 32 bit you can see this you don't need to download all these uh, you can download CD1 only that should be enough I have downloaded the KDE one for testing so this is the one I have downloaded and I have my virtual box running if you have by chance watched my video on installation of uh, uh, mint uh, and GNU Linux on VirtualBox then you know the drill what to do so click new and we call it uh, Debian so it is selected so say continue I got 8 gigs RAM so I can give it 4 gigs so I give it 4 gigs I create a virtual hard drive now and then I choose virtual box disk image and then I say dynamically allocated I say max possible size is 100 gigs I can store lots of stuff in 100 gigs point it to uh, drive you want to save so I am saving it to data which is one of my partitions and I say create so it is created now we configure the system so general looks like this okay so I don't want any toolbar so I disable it now uh, I can enable bi-directional shared clipboard I can enable drag and drop which is very convenient description and all if you want you can put it here so we go to system uh, we don't have floppy drive so disable this and uh, then we enable this and uh, we enable this so I'll be giving four CPUs and right now execution cap is 100% but uh, normally you should put it close to 60 or 50 because your machine will heat up a lot and you see acceleration so this is fine display I give it max possible RAM so that I can get good resolution enable 3D if you want you can enable remote dis display for storage for this you will have to insert the disk in here so choose a disk file so you go here you choose the Debian okay and the Debian VDI is uh, connected to SATA controller 
audio is fine network you don't need to touch unless you have more settings shared folders is one we need to add so you say other and I give it the entire partition which talked about and I choose and give it to that I say auto mount and I let it be read right okay so now we can boot it here we go we are booting this okay now it will take some time which use graphical install now while the system boots uh, let me tell you about something okay it is booting faster than I imagined so I say English and uh, my country is India so I choose India and the key map is American English so it detected the CD-ROM it is loading the components quite fast right I didn't expect it to be running so fast on a VM but all right modern hardware has improved a lot okay so okay it is doing a pv6 configuration it will fail i know let's see okay dhcp network auto configuration succeeded okay so my host name is well let it be debian all right if you want a fancy name for your machine put it there domain name I don't want any domain name so I leave it empty now root password so you punch in a root password depending on your machine whether it's a local machine or server you should keep password complex or easy so it asks me for another username that is me so it asks for that shortened username so you note down that that was shiv you give the password detects the disk it loads additional components and it sets up the partition I don't need to use LVM as of now so I'll say use entire disk let it use entire disk so it says the VBox hard drive all files in one partition uh, let's say separate home partition uh, let's say uh, I guess I don't need separate home partition I delete VMs anytime I want so so you see you have it partitions it it gives me 4 gigs of SAP which is almost uh, equal to RAM and 103 gigs to ext4 so we continue and we say all right so it will partition that and we'll proceed that is creating the ext4 file system and then it is installing the base system it will be done pretty fast because this processor is quite fast which I got it should be done in no time you might hear some background noise lots of dogs are barking actually I normally record the uh, night time but still they bark a lot I'm tired I'm tired of their barking all the time someday I'll kill all of them I'll poison their food <laughs> not really I'm not that bad a person okay so why Debian is so important because Ubuntu takes its packages from Debian and then Mint takes from that and then Traskwell takes from that so lots of Linux uh, distributions take uh, their uh, packages from Debian the source is Debian by the way Debian is meant uh, is um, made from two names Debra and Yam uh, the founders of a couple so Ian and Debra so their husband and wife so it installed the Linux kernel 3.9.1 and let's see okay almost there almost almost okay okay A long time ago when I was to use this uh, uh, Debian it was all text based so we don't want to scan any CD or DVD now we don't want to use a network mirror okay so it retrieves file it is configuring apt which will use to uh, install software aptgate it's doing all the post installation job 
okay we will participate in package UJ survey because that helps people and we want Debian desktop environment and standard system utilities so we say yes it is retrieving files they have made the install quite smooth because I used it long time ago and it was not so easy at that point of time so okay it has retrieved all the files and now it is installing the it will take some time Even if you are remotely interested in programming, then you should uh, try Debian testing because it has it will definitely lead you to certain bugs which you can try to fix, and those are like real world bugs. And then you will dig the code, and in that process, you will learn a lot. And also, if you want to run a server, then uh, even then, you should run Debian testing on your desktop because your server may actually face the same problem even with the stable release which you might have faced in testing version already so it's always good to run testing on desktop one more reason is that you get latest uh, software compared to stable Debian stable gives you older software because the release cycle of Debian is quite long and uh, that's one of the reasons why it is so good because you get all the tested software for your server and it is very stable I have got no choice but to bore you with my talk till it installs uh, it will take some time because there are 877 packages but the patience is worth it The best uh, thing about Debian is that it has a huge, huge repository. I mean, we can say the same for Ubuntu and Mint, but then Ubuntu and Mint gets the repository from uh, Debian. Now, you can argue that OpenSUSE has got a uh, huge repository, but they also have lots of repository which you will have to configure manually. And that is a big pain in my opinion. Not that OpenSUSE or uh, Fedora or CentOS are bad operating systems, but if you remember the secure boot uh, um, history, for those who know, what happened in secure boot was Microsoft is trying to lock down your systems and then uh, they are asking for $1.90 one time fees. Not that it's not about fees, but then Red Hat people. Uh, uh, actually agreed to pay that fees and then Ubuntu said that we won't give you the fees we will lock down the machine same as you and OpenSUSE guys that is novel people they also agreed to pay the same fees so it's not good because it's my hardware so whatever I want to install I would I will install software vendors have got no say what we will install what we want to install it's like a car I mean I buy a car so if I want to play some music in cars music system the car vendor has got no say in that or uh, for that matter if you want to add more brakes to the car I mean if it has got hydraulic brakes and we want to put uh, air brakes sort of stuff though the comparison is somewhat nonsense of pneumatic brakes and hydraulic brakes but uh, for the discussion sake if you want to put disc brakes instead of drum brakes then who will stop you similarly if it's our hardware then we will run our software whichever we want Microsoft can't lock that in the name of security because Free Software Foundation has proposed a much better way to implement secure boot if you get time and should read that paper from Free Software Foundation. And uh, let's see where it goes, but it is certainly not going in good direction. Okay, for those people who are in um, Windows environment, you can follow the Mint uh, guide which I have already put in put on YouTube. So it is installing Grub Boot Loader. So we'll install it on MBR. 
Okay. Okay. So Dash DA. Like finished installing. Sorry that I bored you with all that crap. Because I had no choice. So we'll reboot. Yep. Installation done. How long did it take? I guess five seven minutes. Okay, we are booting. Let's say if something failed. Ooh. More things failed. Okay. Okay, good. Something failing is good actually. <laughs> okay, it has booted. Let's see. Okay. So I enter my password and we go in. Okay, you see this is part of screen right now. We'll have to set up resolution. Norm three failed to load. Okay, we go to applications and we go to system tools and we go to preferences. Okay, system settings. So this kind of thing happens when you try your testing version. So try display. It's resolution now that you can't increase. Okay, so we are stuck with this resolution. This configuration. Okay. So we'll have to tune this, otherwise it is not going to work. But the purpose for which I have recorded this video that you can try this uh, for uh, um, uses so now one thing i'll have to do to increase resolution is to install vbox add-ons uh, which is not installed right now that we will have to install and then it will start working i mean the full resolution stuff so this installed gnome and say i want to log out so I log out. Okay. So suppose you want to choose Genome Classic, you can choose Classic. Okay. I'm not sure if the sound is working or not. <laughs> okay. Seems that it is working. Okay. So that's it for now. I'll recommend that you play with the testing if you want to do testing. Other than that, it's your choice. So let's go to software update. All software is updated. Let's run Synaptic. Let's try to fix its resolution okay let me get shell okay I don't have shell wow utilities okay here is the terminal okay sudo synaptic okay synaptic is not found all right bash sudo itself is not found synaptic okay synaptic is not found very well seems like a screwed system <laughs> okay so we become root okay let's see let's see to get update okay so it's all there and now we say all you do okay it says in it's in media one so we go to slash etc apt sources dot list and then we comment out this entry okay and then we say So it connects to the source and fetches and then 
okay it cannot locate so what we need to do is at repository Debian testing so we need to get that repository okay so we go here and uh, we take this line and we come here and we put this line here okay don't paste even though bidirectional was enabled so we will have to do some work ftp.us.org flash you would also think what kind of person I am recording this video while it does not work right but I'm also trying the video is a side benefit on free okay so okay, classic vi oops this is classic vi I hate classic vi so now we say again update update now let's see what it does okay now it has got big stuff six megs mm -hmm. it will work I'll get it working and I'll show you how many packages we have I'll get synaptic running first and then we will see okay. so it will download lots of package lists so you see how easy it is to get help in Debian now we will have synaptic so now we will install Synaptic. So it will download various packages. So Fire MB, right? Synaptic is the package manager which will install everything for you. Now we need to install the virtual box add-ons, right? Okay, that also we can install let it install these first I have not done a preparation installation to show you all this this is all on the fly so at least you should appreciate me for that much so we search using a cache virtual box okay what do we have okay so we have got utils and we have got this right okay so guest utils guest x11 okay guest additions okay so possibly we can uh, install this install i'm not very sure though that this will work okay it will download 98 megs all right we'll do a reboot quickly it shouldn't take long for this 96 megs is more like 93 4 minutes oh no 1 hour 57 minutes no 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 that is too long let's have some patience see if we can get the full thing running something is wrong with my wireless now this is fine if it installs quickly then we are in luck okay it picked up speed So why do we 
all go through such a pain just to get Linux working because it is about freedom I respect my freedom you respect your freedom and then if you respect your freedom then you ought to uh, protect it because if you do not value your freedom you will lose it and that has happened many times in history human history okay I should have chosen stable so that this would have been a lot more smoother <laughs> but it's all right the more problems you face the more you learn so this is also learning for me okay 50 seconds more after this installs we will reboot You are lucky that it got to work quickly. <laughs> Otherwise, it might have taken some time to download this. Okay. So, I'm not very sure even now that this will work. But all I can do is try, try, sit. Debian is not uh, like meant that it will look beautiful, it just works. If you want a desktop sort of stuff, okay. No suitable model for running kernel phone. Oh, oh, oh. It failed. You see, all this will have to debug. doing some compilation because machine is becoming hotter this is a this has been a long video and I'm also tired speaking all this time oops it is becoming really hot okay to build something Okay, now we do a reboot. Oops, why do I do reboot, reboot? Okay. So we go and fill screen mode and we reboot. Okay, this time again that failed. I don't think resolution is increased. No. Okay, I'll give it. So this is stuck at 1024 by 768. This is virtual box inside virtual box. Okay, we don't want you. We are synaptic here. Now, once more, let's try this. If we can change, certainly we can't change its display. So. As of now, I don't see a way to change its display. I'll have to see it more. But one thing I'm sure, VirtualBox additions will help us do this. But my purpose was to show you how to install Debian Linux on VirtualBox. Uh, 
as soon as uh, I figure this, I'll update this in comments of this video how to achieve this because this video is becoming longer and trying this right now is will not serve any purpose. So for now, I'll say bye and I'm sorry for the resolution part because the resolution is not what we intended and we intended it to have. So for resolution, I'll see you soon. And I'll update uh, that resolution stuff in comments that how you achieve that. Uh, one Google will give us this, in fact, Debian resolution virtual box. So in fact, uh, you can see this here. So they say, the virtual box uh, guest additions you need to install so you need to do certain things here mm -hmm. okay so guest edition one will not actually install okay so you'll have to install this here okay 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 so we'll need to install this and then we'll have to do this. So you'll have to do some work on Linux. It is not flawless. So as I have been saying this, we need to get this installed VirtualBox guest add-ons and then it will work. So I leave it to you to do that.